What's up everybody, Fritz here. In today's video, we're gonna be changing out the oil in your N20 or N26 powered BMW and answering the controversy of which oil weight you should be going with. Let's get into it. So an oil change is a relatively simple job, and I would say it's probably a three to four out of 10 when you factor in all the supporting tools that you need in order to change out the oil. But to answer some of the common questions that typically come up with an F30 oil change, such as why we're not using genuine BMW motor oil, or for those of you who want the absolute best for your car, why we're not using something like Liquid Molly. And to answer both of those questions, the genuine BMW motor oil is simply shell oil relabeled. That's right the same shell gas station where a lot of us pump up our cars is the main producer of BMW motor oil. But what newer BMW owners may not realize and some of you who are older do realize is that Castrol used to be the primary producer of genuine BMW motor oil. So they're very familiar with what additives and what ratio of those additives are needed in order to sustain a long BMW engine life. And for those of you who are wondering about Liquid Molly, I'm actually testing out this blend of 540 on my N55 powered M235i because I normally use the Castrol Edge 540. So if you want to know the results of whether or not that Molly Gen makes that big of a difference on a daily driven car, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because that video will come out in about a month. But not every bottle of Castrol or Liquid Molly is meant for BMW. So to ensure that it is, make sure that it meets BMW long life standards. In this case, BMW LL01. Now that's not to say that I'm giving my dad subpar oil because as I mentioned before, I've been using Castrol in my M235i for the last two years or so with great results. But more importantly than that is the oil weight. And here's where the big controversy comes into play. Should we be using 540 or 530 weight in our BMWs? And to answer that question, the first number, the five, is really dependent on where you live. So the colder you are, the lower this number should be. The hotter environment that you're in, the higher that number should be. But BMW is pretty good with determining that first number as well as the second. The 040 may be okay for those of you in colder climates. And if you live in a hotter climate, maybe 1040 at most because this is what our engine is going to use in order to start up and lubricate the system until it comes up to operating temperatures. If the oil is too thick and takes too long to lubricate the engine, that's gonna put more wear on the internal parts like the timing chain guide, which we might have to service sooner by using a thicker weight when we don't need to. Now, some of you with an earlier model F30 like a 2012 might be saying, my owner's manual says a 540 or a 040 blend is what I should be putting in the engine. And all Although that is true, after BMW did a few renditions with the N20 and N26 powered BMW and did additional testing, what they found was that the 530 blend was just as good at lubricating the engine, but also was better for emissions as well as fuel economy. And because my dad doesn't drive this car that hard, it's gonna save him a whole lot more money at the gas pump and it's going to be able to make him more likely to pass smog when he has to take it in for those biannual checkups. So we're gonna go with the 530 blend in this case. And the last thing that you'll need for your oil change is the proper oil filter. Now, most of the F-Series use the same actual oil filter up here, but because the N20 and the N26 have a plastic oil drain pan, we can't reuse that drain plug. So make sure the kit that you get includes a brand new oil drain plug, as well as all the gaskets. And if you need anything that we use in this video, everything's gonna be in the links down in the description. Once you pop the hood, untwist the oil cap and loosen the oil filter housing. This will allow the oil to drain smoothly. Now jack up the car and place it on jack stands. From underneath, open this panel and get your oil drain pan ready. I loosen this with a T55 in lieu of an Allen wrench to remove the oil drain plug. Just ensure the flap doesn't get hit with any oil as it's draining. While the oil is draining, we can get our new oil drain plug ready. By using some of our new oil, lubricate the O-ring. Then insert the plug once the old oil has drained and torqued to 7 newton meters. We can now add in our 5 quarts of 5W30 
before changing out the filter and gaskets. This will give the new oil time to work its way around the engine before startup. Let the oil drain from the filter before completely removing it, and clean up any oil that may have dripped off. Pull the old oil filter from the housing, then using a pick tool, remove the small gasket near the end. Lubricate the new o-ring with fresh oil and install it onto the oil filter housing and ensure it's fully seated in the groove. Then repeat that process for the o-ring near the top of the oil filter housing. Now we can insert the filter in the housing and install it on the car at 25 Newton meters. Time to start the car and check for leaks. If the filter housing and drain plug have no leaks, close it up and lower the car. And don't forget to dispose of your oil responsibly. Typically if a place sells motor oil, they're more than willing to accept used motor oil and dispose of it for you. I personally drop mine off at the local Walmart. Once the car warms up, you can check the oil level under vehicle info in the iDrive menu. This takes about 90 seconds and makes you wish we had a dipstick. With our oil level sufficient, we can reset our service light. By holding down the button below your fuel gauge, you'll notice your trip miles go to zero then reset back to what they were previously before going into our services menu. Let go and single press to toggle to engine oil. Then hold down until it asks you to confirm the reset. Release, then hold the button until you see the progress bar. Then you can let go. Once it's been reset, confirm it by checking the service required tab in the iDrive menu. And just like that, we've changed out the oil in your BMW and hopefully answered the question of which oil weight you should go with for your N20 or N26 powered BMW. And although the iDrive menu system says that we can change out the oil every 10,000 miles, that's kind of pushing it. It should really be done every five to 10,000 miles. The more highway driving that you do with less stop and go traffic, you could probably get away with 10,000 miles. But the more city driving and the more stop and go traffic that you see, especially with the auto start and stop function, you might want to lean a little bit closer to that 5,000 mile interval. And if you have any additional questions, please leave it for me down in the comment section below. And if you need anything that we use in this video, it's going to be down in the description links. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on that liquid Molly review video. And I'll see all of you in the next one.